All right, so we have Todd asking, how far should a waistcoat overlap the kilt? That's a good question. Enough that your shirt doesn't show. Um, <clears throat> basically, the the way a, a waistcoat kilt combo tends to look sloppiest is when you have a gap between the top of the kilt and the bottom of the vest, especially when you're wearing a white shirt, something that is so glaringly obvious. Um, you want to make sure that your vest overlaps the top of the kilt a little bit so that the shirt doesn't show in between. Um, typically, you, know, you, you don't need it to you don't need to look your best while doing jumping jacks. So <laughs> arms above the head is a bit extreme. However, you know when you're moving about and you, let's say you put your arms out at your side and you lift your vest just a little bit, you want to make sure you don't have the white showing on the side. Typically, I would say, an inch and a half to two inches overlap. Mm -hmm. um, what ends up happening is if you are wearing a belt, it would cover most of the belt and the vast majority of the buckle, which right. is why when you're wearing a vest, typically you don't, don't wear, wear a, belt. a buckle. Exactly. Yep. So this is easier said than done for some of us. I have a long torso and I struggle with this all the time. Um, <clears throat> and uh, yeah, I mean, really the only... Uh, you have to play with your sizes. I mean, if you're dealing with off-the-peg stuff, then um, it may be a question of whether you are going to do better with a regular size or a long size, you know. But other than that, you're looking at bespoke if you want to be really, uh, really persnickety about yeah. it. Um, some people with a long torso will actually do okay with a Saxon vest, which is cut longer. I'm one of those people. I do okay with it. Not perfect, but it helps my problem a little bit. But it's not what I want for formal attire i want a proper highland vest to go with my proper yeah. highland jacket uh, for anything that's other than casual so it's a hack for casual wear but not for regular wear again if you have a long torso um long torso and belly, belly and a larger belly i think we, we both have the same challenge with yep. this and it's not uncommon i mean because if you look at saxon wear this is why in the era when you were meant to wear a waistcoat or a vest with your suit all the time, you had uh, <clears throat> fishtail backs on trousers because they knew your shirt was going to pop out. So they built the pants to be higher up on your back and supported by braces so that you could circumvent that problem and things would stay tucked where they were and your pants were like all the way up to here. Hence the joke about grandpa with his pants up here. Um, so it's a hard one. It's a hard one to deal with. It is, especially when you're wearing a Prince Charlie. A Prince Charlie yeah. jacket and vest. I'm going to put them together. the The side of a Prince Charlie coatie or the the vet or the uh, the jacket that comes with the Prince Charlie is cut much higher. So it it barely reaches the top of the kilt. Same thing with the vest. So I'm I'm going to go a slightly different direction. Guys that tend to like to wear their kilt a little bit lower or under the belly. It doesn't look good when you're wearing a Prince Charlie jacket and vest because when you wear it that low, you then have to get a longer Prince Charlie and a longer vest to meet the top of the kilt. When you're wearing your kilt at the proper height, you know, two inches above the belly button, um, you end up meeting the top of the kilt when you're wearing the correct length vest and the correct length jacket. If you try to wear your kilt lower or if you get a shorter vest or you have a longer torso, yeah. it becomes a problem and then you have that gap and it just it looks a bit sloppy. Um, no, we try to encourage people not to wear a kilt below your belly if you if at all possible anyway. Um, some people still do, but it, it really is meant to be up around the navel. Um, again, everybody is different and sometimes it's easier said than done. Um, for casual occasions, hey, sweater vest, eh, 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 no, no gaposis here. Um, sweater vest with a dicky. I don't own a dicky. I do own, I do own an ascot, however. Um, the, um, I was gonna say the other thing would be if you're not talking about a formal occasion where you really should have a vest, like with a PC, or if you're doing an argyle kind of a thing, um, for a dressier occasion, then you're kind of stuck. If it's sharp day wear or like cocktail hour maybe you skip the vest completely and show off that beautiful belt buckle you have you know and just the jacket and tie you know go 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 for that that level of sharp day wear instead um because you may be more comfortable and you don't have to, if, you, if you feel like you're constantly having to like tuck your shirt in 
maybe just dispense with it. Yeah. Or if you're just worried that like, oh, is my shirt showing? Oh, dude. Right. Right. You keep you know, pulling the kilt up, kind of thing. Yeah. The other what option, of course, do? is to duct tape the shirt to the inside of your leg. You know, just like down your butt and everything. Just tape your tape yourself into the shirt first. Isn't there like a pair of garters or something that there holds are. the socks up and the shirt down yes. and like squish yes. it in the yep. middle? Yes, they're ridiculous. But. Okay. It would work. <laughs> it shouldn't, but it does. Yeah. Yeah. Hope that helps. Hope it helps. <laughs> I'm talking to my taller and my more portly viewers out there. Do you have this problem? We have a little bit of a gap on the side. Let us know what you do in the comments. If you want to see other videos on tips and tricks for Highland wear and how to dress properly, check out these videos over here. Thanks, guys.